This video is presented by EA Game Changers. Thank you EA for allowing me to participate at this event. Hey guys, Slendy here for BF Nations. Before I start, I just need to apologize for my tired voice. It's currently 3am and I'm in my hotel room in Köln making this video for you guys. Also bear in mind that the gameplay settings were not ideal. For example, I had my sensitivity at 1% and it was still too high. Plus the fact that we had no mouse mats to play with. So the quality of my gameplay may not be the best. Either way, let's get started. So during the first day of Gamescom this year, I got to capture some squad conquest footage of the two new maps coming to the game in this Tides of War chapter. The maps are called Provence and Lofoten Islands. To be fully honest with you, my overall feeling about these maps is actually positive, but please allow me to briefly break them down for you. So first up, Provence. This is a map that is set inside of a French city, with plenty of buildings to run in between and plenty of close quarters engagements to be had. One interesting thing about this map is the fact that most of the buildings are actually closed. So you can't sort of go inside of them to hide or peek out through a window. And this forces players to actually stay outside and fight each other head to head. Unless they go for a flank, of course. The only buildings that you can go inside were the ones connected to each flag. One thing I really don't like about the church on Provence is the fact that you can actually use this truck to climb onto the roof. This, in my opinion, is not okay for infantry-only gameplay. Maybe I could argue that if there was a tank, then the roof could be blown up. But since there is no tank on neither of these two maps, actually, I don't think rooftop access is a good idea. The spawns may seem bad, but I actually think that they could be alright. You have three or four different paths you can take out of your spawn, so even if you are getting spawn killed, you get the chance to push one sort of lane together with your team and should by that most likely break through. I know the odds for that are a lot smaller in like regular public matches though, but we will just have to see. Maybe the opposite team shouldn't be able to push so deep into the enemy spawn though. I have to say that overall the map flows really nicely. It has a lot of rotation lanes that are like easy to understand and it's very clear that the map was actually built for a 5v5 competitive mode in an infantry only setting and the same goes for Lofoten Islands of course. So let's talk a little bit about Lofoten Islands then. This is a map that is set in Norway. The nature looks pretty similar to the Firestorm map at least. It has a very basic layout I would say but Still quite a few interesting map elevation choices. What I mean by that is that, for example, one flag is inside of a sort of pit, one is higher up, almost like on a hill, and one is by the water on a bridge area. You can pretty easily hide outside an objective, I would say, and wait for your perfect moment to strike if needed. It also prevents snipers from being too effective, I would say, and Maybe that's why they've added the sniper tower. I feel like the A flag can become pretty hard to capture if you're down in the pit, because there's just so little cover and you can almost get shot from 360 degrees when you're down there. To counter this, there's a house above the flag, but once that gets blown up, you're sadly just as vulnerable. I like that you can use the hills on the side of the map as a flanking route, even though you don't really have any cover if you go for it. I found it to work well at the start of the round though, since everyone are just running for the first flag and not to the side of the map. I guess you could also use some of the water as a flanking route, although I have not tried that out. The map has some open areas, but the open areas are not too big because it's a small map in general so it truly shows that the map was built for a 5v5 mode. So let's talk a little bit about squad conquest on these two maps then. I feel like since these maps have been adapted to 8 players per team instead of 5 players per team, some scenarios can get very chaotic, but I definitely mean on a regular battlefield chaotic level. It really does feel like playing domination when you play these maps, but on maps that are actually better designed for a smaller scale game mode like Domination. 
with the exception that you can spawn on the flags, of course. Can I say that I've missed this type of experience in Battlefield 5 then? Yes, I have for sure. I am a fan of smaller scale modes and close quarters combat in Battlefield, so this definitely scratches that itch for me. However, what itch it doesn't scratch is the competitive play one. I'm at least personally saddened that we have not yet got to hear what's up with the 5v5 mode, and it feels bad that the resources that must have went into it are currently in vain. Luckily for me, and for you guys, we have an idea. Together with Codename Deuce from Esport Battlefield, we are putting together a 5v5 match on Thursday, together with a couple of other game changers. We will be playing these two maps with 5 players per team, in Squad Conquest though. At least we will get to experience these maps with the right player counts, and maybe that will paint an even better picture of these maps. So stay tuned for that. But that's all I got for now. Head over to my personal channel if you want to see some more Battlefield content very soon. The link will be in the description. Thank you so much for watching, let's leave the Swedish word in fart at the end of our comments below, and we will all see how many people got this far into the video. Don't forget to press the subscribe button and the bell for more content very soon. But I am President Slendy, and I wish you a fine day. Easy, I'll fix you. Stay calm. I got you! 